When a researcher comes up with a hypothesis, he or she can test that hypothesis via an experiment. For example, in psychology, a researcher might hypothesize that humans are more strongly motivated to take care of acuter babies. This was a real hypothesis explored by Glocker et al. in 2009, and we're going to use that as a jumping off point to exploring independent and dependent variables. So an independent variable is the variable that we're manipulating, so it's often called the manipulated variable. We're trying to see the effect of this variable, so we begin the experiment with multiple levels of the independent variable. That might become more clear when we explore our example in detail. So in this case, the baby's cuteness is supposed to have an effect on people's desire to take care of it. According to our hypothesis, the baby's cuteness may change people's desire to take care of it. So, we begin the experiment with multiple levels of cuteness. And the point of the experiment is to see what effect these multiple levels of cuteness have on people's desire to take care of it. So this tells us that cuteness is the independent variable. We alter the levels of the baby's cuteness at the beginning of the experiment, and at the end of the experiment, we can check to see whether it's had an effect on people's desire to take care of the babies. The dependent variable is the variable we're measuring, so it's often called the measured variable. We're trying to see how the independent variable affects or changes this variable. We don't know whether the independent variable will change the dependent variable. That's why we're conducting the experiment. So in this case, we don't know whether baby's cuteness will have an effect on people's desire to take care of it, but we're doing the experiment to check and see. This means that people's desire to take care of the baby is going to be our dependent variable. Now some quick questions. A researcher hypothesizes that hot temperatures increase aggression. She puts study participants in rooms of differing temperatures and measures the participants' levels of aggression. So in this situation, which is the independent variable? If you said B, that is the correct answer. From the first sentence, we see that the hypothesis states that hot temperatures increase aggression. So right away, the researcher is predicting that temperatures have an effect on aggression, or that temperatures can change aggression. So this indicates right away that temperature is the independent variable. Later on, we read that the researcher measured the levels of aggression which is a big glue that aggression is the dependent variable and not the independent variable. Now for question two. A researcher thinks that stress is affected by different kinds of music and he wants to design a study to test this. What should his independent and dependent variables be? If you said A, that's correct. This question was harder than the last one because you're given less information and the phrasing is affected by is a little confusing. We can rephrase stress is affected by different kinds of music to say stress is changed by different kinds of music or in more straightforward language that different kinds of music change stress levels. Therefore we would want to design the experiment so the participants are exposed to different kinds of music and their stress levels are measured. And that way it makes sense that the independent variable will be the kind of music because that's different at the beginning of the experiment and the dependent variable is the stress level, which is what's measured at the end of the experiment. It's always a good idea to ask, what are we measuring? Because this will help you figure out what the dependent variable is.